Welcome. You've enrolled in Introduction to Digital Arts, an online studio for 2D visual art created using digital media. My name is William Cromar, and I'm a multimedia artist based in Philadelphia. The course is designed to introduce compilation, vector, and raster image programs to you, allowing you to synthesize software skill with the fundamental principles and elements of 2D visual design. The course can be taken by non-art majors, although it also serves as the initial course in the new media concentration in our BA in Art degree program. In addition to our creative work, we'll also experience some of the business side of art. And yes, there is a business side. Cultural creators deal with intellectual property and licensing issues, project management challenges, creating collaboration standards, developing rational file naming and folder structuring schemas, archiving, and self-promotion. These happen to be life skills that have relevance to any citizen of cyberspace, artist or non-artist alike. So we'll create some incredible work along the way using Adobe Creative Cloud applications, which are free to access for members of our academic community. Illustrator, introduces you to vector-based image making. While in Photoshop, we understand the potential of raster-based pixelated imagery. Compilation programs combine images made in other programs, and we'll explore compilation strategies using Adobe Spark, a browser-based time and motion application, as well as InDesign, a hardcore graphic design publication tool. We'll use Adobe Acrobat Pro to assist with creating PDF output files. We'll do all this while using free cloud-based tools such as Google Docs, Clockify for time tracking, WordPress for blogging, Flickr for image hosting, and Box for creating a digital portfolio and archive. Canvas, of course, will be our learning management system where you'll find the structure of the course. And New Media Wiki is our source for content. New Media Wiki is an open education resource I authored and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 license. And because it lives outside of Canvas, it means you'll be able to return to the course materials in the future as often as you wish for free. Free as in the free speech rather than the free stuff spirit of the word. It adapts and expands CC licensed materials from digital foundations by Christine Burroughs and Mike Mandeberg, and is copiously linked to many other resources on the web. The course is an art studio first, meaning we lead with the visual principles and elements that govern art making. These are co-equal with the software skills you develop and which often overshadow visual principles in a computer lab. But we make a conscious effort to lead off with discussions of art making, expression, art history, and the syntax of image making. Like any artist in any other more traditional media, your job is to synthesize these visual principles with your media to create meaningful artistic expression. And we'll want you to be clear how you do that as you describe the making of your work in your blog-based presentations. Now, this is pretty challenging in an art studio. In my regular face-to-face -face studios, students learn by doing, and the more they do, the more they learn. So it turns out an art studio is not an easy A. You have to put in effort, a lot of effort. The regular 15 week live studio is designed with the expectation of about nine hours of work per week, six of which are in class meeting hours. This gives most people enough time structure that they can handle the three or so hours outside of class on their own. A purely online accelerated context like this present some extraordinary challenges that the 15-week live studio does not. This studio covers the same content using the same learn by doing model. So instead of working about nine hours a week, you'll need to find about 20 hours a week to cover the same objectives as we do in a standard semester. If you can't make that commitment, you may want to seriously consider taking some other course. Another challenge is communication. Online courses are asynchronous, meaning we have no set meeting time. 
The good news is this means you can log in and work at your convenience. The bad news is you become totally and independently responsible for time management, and you may potentially feel disconnected from your colleagues. We need alternatives to help us out, especially when we work on our collaborative project. So we have several means to stay in communication over the six weeks we are exploring the studio. Canvas uses the PSU email system and we will all generally be checking in several times a week during an academic term. I personally will check in daily. Oh, and please, no non-PSU emails, texting, or IMs. We need to keep any course-related text-centric communication inside the PSU ecosystem. We have a chat room associated with the course, and should someone else also be logged in, you can have a real-time conversation. I will conduct virtual office hours twice a day, Monday through Friday, when I will be active in Canvas to chat. Each project has a discussion forum where asynchronous question and answer dialogue can happen for that specific task. And your personal course blogs will be linked to the New Media Abington course meta blog so that people can see your work and provide critical commentary at the end of a project. To make sure all this can happen, you will need a rock solid and reliable connection to the internet. You'll also need access to a PC or Mac computer that is powerful enough to download and use the Adobe Creative Cloud applications we've mentioned. A modern browser such as Chrome, Safari, Firefox, or Opera will be necessary. Don't try this with Explorer, please. Finally, you'll need access to a scanner that can scan a standard 8.5 by 11 inch paper size in color. If you don't have access to a scanner, please let me know and we can work out an alternative. Although, if you are at a PSU campus like Abington, you'll have no problem finding one in a computer lab or library. Technical specs and access to software is described in detail in the syllabus and other course materials. Once you're set up technically, you'll set yourself up so that you can engage successfully with the course. We'll use time blocking and time tracking strategies that are common for cultural creatives to manage a project with. You'll create your personal blog and you'll use PSU Box for your digital portfolio archive. At the end of the term, you'll supply a self-assessment that will ask you to rate your performance on many aspects of academic etiquette. All of these are known in the syllabus as engagement activities and they compose about 40% of your final evaluation. A fully engaged student will have no problem achieving our ambitious course objectives through six creative projects. Ready-made, 13 ways, mandala, exquisite corpse, variations, and the never-ending project. Well, it does finally end, but you'll see that's what artists think about making portfolios sometimes. Each project is generally divided into three groups of activities, references, exercises, and the actual artwork. References generally are readings that familiarize you with a combination of visual principles, art history, and other background materials needed to create work. You usually aren't asked to make something in a reference title, but without the readings, your final project will not perform. When you are in these titles, you function as a researcher. Exercises are generally where you learn software through tutorial and hands-on exercises that usually result in projects authored but not originally conceived by you. You're asked to keep all exercise work, post it in a blog, and archive it in a portfolio. When you are in these titles, you function as a student. Artwork is the main dish. It's where you synthesize your knowledge of visual principles with software skills to create original works of art. You present all your artwork production on your blog and archive it in a portfolio. When you are in these titles, you function as an artist. The course load for this online experience is similar to a regular studio course. Although in the wiki, you'll see mention of a video and physical prints 
that we won't have the resources to do. In Canvas, deadlines are described for each activity. The deadlines, especially those for the Exquisite Corpse collaborative project, are hard and fast and must be met to move forward in the course. If you have a serious emergency, please email me right away. Contacting me in advance of a deadline may provide some leeway for a legitimate emergency extension. If you contact me after a deadline, there's very little I can do due to the nature of online course delivery. If you have technical difficulties, handle them as I describe in the syllabus. If you have difficulty with accessing materials, try a different browser among the group that I mentioned earlier. The trick is communicate early and don't give up easily if things get technically challenging. In the syllabus, there are links to the code of conduct and the academic integrity policy. These are in full effect for this course. The code of conduct boils down to the golden rule Treat others taking the course in the manner you would wish to be treated. Academic integrity boils down to ensuring that anything you represent as your work is in fact based in your own ideas. There are many tools available to check for plagiarism. A Google image search has a powerful algorithm that finds identical imagery and other plagiarism tools can find pilfered words. If you do use the work of others, and you will in the very first project that uses appropriation as an artistic device, you must cite those works as described in course materials. Plagiarism is tempting, but the cost is too high to give in to that temptation. The work you're expected to do is challenging, but the course materials are comprehensive and have been tested in live studio and proven to be helpful. Questionnaires are provided to help you communicate about difficulties with the research materials, in addition to communication modes already mentioned, and a how to get help link on the main page of the course will give you advice about a flowchart of solutions. On a final note, we are all aware that many works of art are confrontational. Art presents challenges to individuals' beliefs in ways that some may perceive as offensive. In this course, we will interact with art that may include strong language or images supporting confrontational points of view regarding socially sensitive topics, sexuality, race, politics, or religion, among others. Some of your colleagues may create work that touches on these same things. If this raises any concern, I'm happy to discuss this personally with you. So that's our brief tour of the course. Let's spend the next six weeks getting creative in digital media.